Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. This is where we're actually going to start proactively configuring and preparing our Zen armor. In the previous video, I know we did installation and then when we took care of CrowdSec, we did installation and setup. So I still haven't released one when we're talking about configuration of your Zen armor. So we're going to uh, fill in the spot with this video right here. Just like CrowdSec, Zen Armor is an almost, I want to say almost, set it and forget it type of application because you're going to give it your policies, uh, you're going to give it your, your different categories, and you're going to set them to block and they're never going to bother you again. And that's that's pretty awesome you can come back and review some basic uh, reports however without an active subscription it's you can't really get a lot of information out of the dashboard if uh, you feel that your network security actually you know what scratch that it's 10 bucks a month uh, I pay it you should too because your Home network security, your individual security at home for your family. It is important enough and it is worth the $10 a month that they are charging for for this. For for a home network, $10 a month, it's it's absolutely nothing. It's it's cheaper than Amazon, it's cheaper than uh you know Netflix, it's cheaper than YouTube Premium, and it's a it's a fairly important subject that uh literally everybody is affected for. If you have Zen armor on a firewall, please pay the $10 a month. Let's say for argument's sake that you have paid for it and now you're wondering how you're going to configure it. Once you log into your Zen armor dashboard, we're going to be focusing on the default policy because the secondary secondary site, quote unquote, the one that I'm virtualizing in my lab over here. I don't really have a need for it to have a, a, a paid subscription for that. You, however, you are probably going to be working on your primary instance and depending on the subscription level that you're paying for, it's going to be slightly different. For example, the $9.99 a month or the $100 a year subscription plan that they offer, they have three policies that you can manage at a time. And uh, whereas, in my virtual environment, I will only have the one. So log into your Zen, Zen console, go under policies and select the device that you want to manage. And we're going to select the policy that we want to manage. And it's going to give us uh, like a win little Windows division that's going to be giving us a little bit of extra settings that we can play with. So configuration. Uh, as the default policy, it's an always on policy. Um, you can, this window basically, if you have access to more than one policy, it's going to say, do you want to turn this policy on or off? Uh, which uh, Zen armor you want it to apply or which devices? It, it's actually pretty cool. When I had the, um, the, um, the, um, the business level free trial subscription on my primary one, it was pretty cool. There was a lot of versatility to uh, to adapt from which devices you wanted to apply, which category of devices you wanted to apply. Um, with the certain rules, do you want to cut internet connectivity? Do you want to allow certain services to access? It, it was it was a very feature extensive uh, list that you could control based on different variables that were available to you and. The configuration list was really, really, really versatile. But because we're real, we're um, we're configuring the default policy list, the the basic who does this apply to is not available. However, everything else sort of is. So if we go under the security tab, this is where it gets interesting because we have a couple of categories that we can block DNS over HTTPS. You want that allowed because if you have PFSense and you have configured your pardon, 
and you have configured DNS over HTTPS or DOH, it will block that traffic. Now, the other categories, uh, malware, virus, you see how it's allowed. We're gonna, <coughs> sorry, we're gonna block it. We're gonna block the phishing category, the hacking category, spam sites, the potentially dangerous, and the park domains. Basically, what that means is that sites that fall into this category malware virus phishing hacking spam potentially dangerous or even prank domains they will be blocked from um access uh sorry they're gonna block your network from accessing the, the sites that are falling within this category and then where we're going to scroll down into the advanced security we are also going to block the following categories recent malware phishing and outbreaks oh yeah okay so i didn't realize that this is the advanced security feature is is a uh, premium subscription functionality i do apologize however because you do have knock on wood hopefully a home subscription this is what you will be blocking you will be blocking recent malware, botnet, botnet DGA, compromised websites, spyware and, ad spyware and adware, keyloggers and monitoring, a proxy, dead sites, uh, malformed DNS packets, and newly recovered sites. The only reason why I'm including newly recovered sites is because usually those are sites that have been recovered from some type of attack or to my understanding anyways i wish there was a little bit of a description sort of better explaining the categories but if i had to take a wild guess this is what it would be it so the newly recovered sites are sites that have been recovered from some type of attack whether it's a virus attack whether it's a hijack whether it's a um oh what was that what was that other one called um a encryption hostage so on and so forth if we go under app controls this time we have a category on the types of traffic rather than the uh, category of a website that's visited and the type of traffic that we are going to be blocking we're going to be blocking ad, ad tracker we're going to be blocking ads there is not really that much that you can block over here if you just want to stop having access to a certain type of websites this is where you will be blocking them we're going to be blocking access to proxies, remote access. If you block search, basically um, sites like Bing and Google, uh, DuckDuck, DuckDuckGo, sorry, any type of like search engine are going to be blocked. Um, social network, sometimes yes, sometimes no. I leave it open for my family because they have Facebook and Instagram, WhatsApp, Viber, you know, they talk with family. So in, in case where you would be, say, in a working environment, this would be blocked. VoIP, this is so PBS accessing uh, outside of the internet. This is what's going to be blocked as well. System and OS, this is actually a pretty decent block. If you want to remove access to uh, iOS, Android updates, Mac OS update servers, and Windows update. Um, this is actually a pretty good way to approach it. What ended up happening, uh, personal experience, uh, this is why I'm selling, say, saying it with such confidence, is that I had this enabled uh, the first time around because I didn't know what it is. And um, Windows updates kept failing, uh, meaning that like Windows would still uh, pull the update list and would quote unquote try to apply it, but it would constantly update. It would reboot and everything would be fine after that, but it would still sort of try to update. And uh, that's because of this setting right here. So it would never, uh, it would never complete its update, but it would still try to pull it, if that makes any sense. Uh, and then the last thing that we're going to be uh, going under is web controls uh at home web search is not really enforced yet uh because it does have a very um deep rich reach sorry facebook uh has like a safe category i guess youtube safe search is forced google safe search it's good to have it however 
I just leave it at, I'd click at moderate control or sometimes even custom if I want to, uh, or you can, I can't, but, uh, basically I include, uh, alcohol and tobacco, um, chats, date or sorry, not chats, dating, uh, empty sites, oh, gambling, which one, uh, hate violence, uh, illegal drugs. Mm, what else was there? Pornography, obviously search and well the search engine again don't fall into it don't block search engines because google bing uh duck, duck, go anything that uh you use to search stuff on the internet will be blocked uncategorized websites are also banned for me and whereas uh websites are also banned for me um simply because it's just uh, a little bit of oh and self self-harm obviously is another category that i add onto my block list <clears throat> That's that's pretty much it for configuring it. Everything else is just uh, viewing of reports. Uh, because my lab environment doesn't have a um, description level, I can't really see anything. You, on the other hand, should be able to if you have already paid for the uh, home subscription. Right now, um, the this is the connection um, sort of summary or quote unquote dashboard. And, and with the home subscription, the $100 a year, it is actually fairly um, feature rich and um, very informative. It gives you information of where your traffic is going and the different, you know, the different uh, DNSs. Uh, for example, uBlock Origin, if you've gone on uBlock Origin, this is also used to um, update the pardon. Um, if you have uBlock Origin installed or on any of your browsers, this is how the um, the uh, add-on updates itself, uh, downloads Windows updates. The, this is another one that you know is is blocked as well. Uh, it tells you um, where traffic is localized, and then the uh, different um, different types of apps and um, traffic category that it's going through the uh, well. In our case. EF sense, but in your case, it would be whatever firewall appliance uh, that you have installed. And uh, it does a pretty good job at summarizing the amount of traffic that goes through your interfaces. It also gives local assets, um, IPs. I kind of wish it would also pull for MAC addresses. That's me. You probably don't need it, but uh, having another table and pulling MAC addresses would probably be. A pretty good deal and obviously the table of remote hosts that have access to um your network thank you so very much uh this is sort of a a quick summary slash introduction slash walkthrough on how to uh manage and administer your uh, Vena armor instance on your firewall we are going to revisit this further down the line when I make more videos regarding uh, different types of firewall. I still have to do a video regarding installation management of Zen Armor and CrowdSec on a Debian based firewall, which is pretty cool. I almost have figured it out and I'm very close to uh, setting a environment where I'm going to do it as well. So that's coming. Uh, I ended up uh, also ordering a couple of new switches for home. I'm going to be reviewing those as well. I'm pretty excited for the cup, the couple of things that I'm going to be bringing uh, to you guys. So please stay tuned, like and subscribe. It helps more than you think. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching.